World War II had just come to an explosive end. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki had proved to the world that the future of warfare is nuclear. The United States government quickly began searching for the perfect place to test new weapons, and they found many suitable areas, but one was especially attractive. A tiny ring of islands in the middle of the Pacific, called Bikini Atoll. It was far away from typical air and sea routes, so that testing could remain secret. But there was just one problem. What was going to happen to the people who lived there? The island held 167 people, headed by a paramount chief known as King Judah, and they were forced to relocate 125 miles east across the wide open ocean to Rangarik Atoll. It was considered by the locals to be a place unfit for living since it was a sixth the size of Bikini and was believed to have been inhabited by evil spirits. The precise circumstances of their relocation are not entirely known, but one way or another they went to the new atoll so their old home could see unimaginable destruction. The inhabitants' reluctance to go turned out to be valid. They had only been left with enough food for a few weeks, and Rongeric soon proved to be vastly inferior to Bikini, which had already started its tenure as a nuclear test site. The food supply quickly ran out, and the crops didn't grow well, and there was a lack of edible fish in the lagoon. Within two months, they were starving and begging the U.S. to return them to their island. After two whole years on Rongeric, the Bikinians were moved again. This time, they were moved to Kwajalein Atoll, where they lived in tents on a strip of grass next to an airport runway. This was clearly not a sustainable choice, so after another six months of rough living, a new island was chosen as a more permanent solution. Keeley Island was uninhabited, and the former Bikinians, now numbered 184, made it their new home. Once again, they felt the pressure of starvation as they learned that the island was incompatible with their traditional ways of fishing and living. Furthering the problem, Keeley Island was surrounded by rough seas, making it difficult for any food shipments to be made for a significant portion of the year. For decades, they struggled to survive as they faced hurricanes, food shortages, and little help from the government. Their old home, bombarded by over 20 nuclear explosions both in the air and under the water, had become too irradiated for safe living. After the final test had been concluded, some of the residents tried to move back to Bikini, despite warnings from the government that it wasn't safe, and they faced serious consequences. Genetic issues in children born on the island, stillbirths, miscarriages, and more plagued those who dared to return. Today, many of the descendants of those original Bikini Islanders still live on Keeley Island. With a growing population of about 600 residents, the island, which measures less than a half of a square mile, is getting cramped. Some have moved to nearby islands or atolls, and others have made the long trip to the mainland United States. The story of the Bikini Islanders is one of many struggles. The struggle to understand what was happening to their homeland. The struggle to adapt to a new world. And more recently, the struggle to receive compensation for the sacrifices they were forced to make. Which is even more important is, we really believe that the U.S. should pay for any kind of movement of the people of Bikini from Kili because they were the ones that put them there. The Bikinians didn't move there on their own. They were put there by the U.S. government, and now they, they feel that they shouldn't have to pay for this out of their very...